Well, hello and welcome to Bowtie Life. In this video, I got myself a little worked up and got myself a little excited because I wanted to make some pickled ginger. Please subscribe so that you don't miss anything coming up uh, and help grow the channel. Here we go. Hi, I'm Bowtie Dave. Okay, so if you saw a recent video where we actually harvested a whole bunch of ginger, uh, dehydrated it, uh, vacuum sealed it, and there it is. I literally just got done recording that video and I was walking into the kitchen and realized I have a few pieces of ginger left that I could probably make some pickled ginger. And I, I gotta tell you, when I get the sushi, um, I love that little pile of ginger that you get next to the sushi. In fact, uh, Mrs. Bowtie is not that crazy about it, but she's more than happy to give it to me and I eat every bit of it. Ginger does not go to waste on my plate, ever. So there's not a lot here. I only got, uh, what's this, five pieces of ginger. I'm not even sure how good this one is. This uh, piece, I believe, was actually a seed ginger for last year. In other words, this is the piece of the root that I actually stuck in the ground. I'm pretty sure that's what this is. So we'll have to see if we can get anything good. But the uh, first thing I'm going to do here uh, is, and they've been kind of cleaned from the most of the dirt. Oh, there's a little dirt right there. Uh, they've been cleaned from most of the dirt, probably all of it, but we're going to be taking a spoon. And there's a couple of ways to clean the skin off of here, uh, but um, I've been doing, I've been watching videos on this for a long time and uh, I've, done, I've used those little carrot peelers and it just seems to take off too much. The spoon you can kind of control and just get off the skin of the ginger and uh, make them look clean. That's the key thing about, if, you're, if you've seen that pickled ginger, uh, it always looks clean, it's always beautiful. And part of that is all the skin has been taken off. So uh, this will be a first for me to be doing that to the ginger, especially such <laughs> tiny pieces. Um, the recipe is very simple. Uh, there's a little bit of salt. There's some sugar. There is some uh, rice vinegar. Uh, no sponsorship or anything. This is just something we picked up. I don't know. Did we get this from Walmart? I'm not sure. Found it in the cabinet. But uh, now it does say seasoned mild and sweet. Um, I don't know if, mean, if that means there's something else, but it does say it's rice vinegar. So I'm going to go with it. Uh, like I said, it's what we had. So, and we'll end up uh, probably putting it in a half pint jar, uh, whoops, um, when we're done, and uh, we'll go through that. So, uh, let's just kind of walk through the steps here and um, see if we can figure this out. I've never done this before, and uh, if you've watched any of my videos, you know I'm not the chef of the kitchen, but I do like to ferment things and pickle things and stuff like that. So, here we go. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited. Uh, ooh, I, I hope this tastes as good as I think it will. But uh, yeah, let's start off by getting these things cleaned and sliced. Sounds good? Yeah, sounds good to me. So addressing the spoon, and I don't, I've never done this before. It's gonna be an experiment, but uh, we have different kinds of spoon in our drawer. We have some nicer spoons, some medium kind of spoon, and then we have these really cheap ones. And I'll tell you what, this cheap one kind of has an edge on it. And I have a feeling that this edge is going to be what cleans this ginger the best. Let's just see what happens here. Ooh, that's got some juice in it too. Which is why we're the, one of the next steps, we're gonna be putting uh, a couple of teaspoons of salt on this to extract out a lot of that moisture. Now I'm getting some spray back from this, which doesn't really surprise me, I guess. Ooh, that was some big spray back. Coming back in my face. But I'm cleaning this. This is the piece that uh, I suspect was um, the seed ginger from last year, but it's actually, ooh, it does smell good. And it makes it an old piece. And you know, one of the things they say is you typically use new ginger to do this with. And I can understand that. Um, today, and these are pretty new ginger root. 
um, young ginger root. So we'll get something good out of this if, if this works. And I have a feeling it's going to be a wonderful. So now this piece right here has two little holes in it. Kind of makes me curious what could have. It looks like something burrowed in there. And I am not sure what would have burrowed. Oh, it's not very deep. Okay. It looks like just a piece of dirt in there, actually. That one's a little deeper. Okay, that's the end of it. Okay, that's a nice clean piece of ginger. All the paper is off of there. Let's try the small one now. Oh, wow. This actually huh, was using the handle. Uh, ooh. Let's get creative, right? Look how good that works. That actually works better. That's interesting. So yeah, we're just gonna clean this off and then we're going to slice it with the mandolin, same mandolin that we used in the other video we just recorded about preserving it dehydrated. So in full disclosure, of course, uh, I have never cleaned ginger in my life, and it turned out to be a lot easier than I thought it would. Uh, the, the, the spoon just really peeled the skin off so easily that um, I, I don't know why I've never done it this way. I've just kind of been scared of it, but boy, it came out really good. So I'm, I'm very happy with uh, how easy it was and that I could get this ginger looking as good as it is. It's not the most beautiful ginger, but I think it'll work for... Hey, a guy's first experiment. You know, I am not the uh, chef. I am a handyman, and I'm just kind of tinkering around with all these these things. So, <laughs> this uh, this mandolin that we've got here, you've seen me use it before. It's just a three-in-one adjustable uh, mandolin slicer. It at Julianne's Waffles and does uh, does slicing. And uh, there's a little uh, a dial on here that you can adjust um, to millimeter thickness, one to uh, zero to five, uh, I'm sorry, I think that says nine millimeters uh, thick, or you can do julienne slicing uh, at nine millimeters or, whew, or four millimeters. Let's see, I'm trying, I'm getting this, uh, there we go. Anyway, so I'm gonna try this on a one millimeter. Um, Maybe one, maybe that's one, maybe that's two. No, that looks like one millimeter. Okay, I'm gonna try this on one millimeter. Let's see what, what this thing will do. Oh, uh, it also, this particular one comes with these great little gloves, and I don't know what they're made of, but they, uh, they don't get sliced on here. This is a very sharp blade, folks, very sharp. Uh, you don't wanna get your finger in there. I've, I've, I know, trust me. Don't ask me how I know, I know. So anyway, um, it has little guides right here, it has little spikes in there, and you can see the spikes. Uh, you can pressure whatever you're slicing up in there, like this. Uh, so yeah, it's just very simple. So uh, I'm gonna put this down in here, and we'll see what we get. Oh, that is a very thin slice. Oh, I love it. I wonder if this thing what happens if I go one? I, th I think that I'm on the right slice. I'm gonna try the one. Uh, yeah, okay. So this is gonna be the right slice size. All right, I'm gonna go back to that one millimeter. Okay, so now I know this is not gonna make a whole lot, uh, which is probably what I'll end up using half a pint jar, but, because it's so, okay, so it gets to a point where it's too thin, and you can see here, I can go ahead and slice this thing all the way down to nothing. Okay, so anyone who watches my videos knows that I am not a chef. My knife skills do not exist. I'm not even sure I know what knife skills are, so this mandolin becomes my uh, go-to thing for slicing up stuff like this. Uh, this little glove that comes with it. I'm very, I, I just can't be more excited about this glove because yes, I have sliced my fingers on that blade before. So anyway, these, uh, 
These pieces end up coming out nice and thin. There's a bit of juice in there, so we're gonna have to go in here, and the next step here, of course, is to uh, put this in a bowl and put a couple of teaspoons of salt in here. So uh, my hands, of course, are clean. Uh, I do know that much about chefing, chefing, cooking, uh, being a chefery, uh, whatever. Anyway, so um, I am using uh, the Himalayan pink salt uh, simply because this is what I use a lot of time for this type of stuff. So um, it calls for the, well, okay, so I looked at several recipes and um, I kind of went for an average recipe. Uh, there's the variations, I, I have a feeling that it is not, um, it's, it's, it, there's not a uh, dead set, this is the way to do it, which of course is everything I uh, dream about because that's the way my life in the garden chip typically is. There is no set way. Uh, I just kind of fumble my way through and find success in some things and not in others. But you want to be sure to get this salt completely on all the surfaces of this ginger. Now, this stuff is really thin, which I'm very excited about. Um, but it, and it, So it does stick together, so I'm making sure to pull pieces like that apart so that the salt can get in there. Now what the salt does is it will draw the moisture out of this ginger, the water. And uh, from what I understand, you wanna get as much of that water out as possible so that the next uh, big step um, works better and, and, and the flavor and flavoring can get inside there better. So uh, yeah, we'll be putting in the Himalayan pink salt uh, I'm not sorry, I'm the, the rice vinegar here in a little while, but first we have to get this here and we're gonna let this set for about 15 to 20 minutes. And I think just about every piece of this is separated and has salt on it. So yeah, if you ever made uh, sauerkraut, you've seen how the salt draws the water out of the sauerkraut, it's, it's out of the cabbage. It's very cool. Uh, so, yeah, just me learning along here. Okay, so there's that. We're gonna let this set for 15 to 20 minutes while we go to the kitchen and start the other part. So before I throw this in uh, boiling water to blanch it, uh, notice that's all the water that the salt has drawn out of the ginger. Now, ginger isn't full of water like a tomato is or a cucumber. A ginger is more like, oh, I don't know, carrot. You know, there's not a lot of juice in a carrot, but there is juice there, and salt will draw that out. And so we're trying to get as much water out of this as we can for the next process. Now, you'll notice we have a um, little saucepan here. It doesn't, it's not a very big one uh, that uh, is boiling already. We want, if you're going to blanch things, you want to be sure that your boiling has started and that it's in good shape. Uh, go. Now what blanching does, and it'll heat back up here shortly, what blanching does here is it actually stops the enzyme action. I'm going to set a timer here. It stops enzyme action in whatever you're blanching, like in this case the ginger. We blanch beans, we blanch all kinds of stuff, but uh, it stops the enzyme action that, number one, can result in the loss of flavor. We don't want to lose any of the flavor, and uh, also it helps keep its color. And what it does, we're gonna we're gonna cook it here for just a couple minutes, and then we're going to use the strainer over here I have behind me to uh, drain off this hot water and rinse it off with cold water, just cold tap water. So see, it's already boiling. It's it's still at temperature, but we want this to just kind of cook just for two to three minutes, not very long at all. It also removes impu some impurities. I see it's actually, looks like it's taking off some more dirt that I may, may have missed. But uh, yeah, so let's uh, let this go for another 90 seconds and we will be putting it in the strainer. And so you can see it's it got a good boil on. It is blanched. We now strain that hot water off and then we stop the cooking process. And that's part of the magic of the blanching 
is to get it cooled off quickly. Uh, sometimes we stick it in a water bath with ice in it. That will also do the same thing. But we're actually looking to clean off some of that salt as well, which is in there, and get this thing as cool as we can, as fast as possible. Now it's January 1st right now, so the water coming out of the tap is actually pretty cold here in Destin, Florida. So that is pretty good. And we're going to let that drain really, really well. Because the next thing we're going to do, we have over here, we have a uh, sanitized uh, half pint jar. Uh, I hope I don't need a pint jar, though I do have one sanitized in the sidelines waiting in case I need it. So remember, we're trying to get as much moisture out of this as possible, right? So we're actually going to take this and we're going to squeeze it as dry as possible before we go on to the next step. And we're going to just drop it into our jar. Now, I don't have a lot of this, but because mainly this is an experiment, which is a lot of what I do. Just experiment, trying things out, see if I can figure this stuff out as I go. And of course, I am not supervised right now, but Mrs. Bowtie is nearby in case I need some help. Always makes me feel better to have an experienced cook close by. So as I suspected, we had about a half pint of this ginger that we're gonna be preserving. A uh, half pint is a cup. So we're about to do some ingredients over here that's going to equal about a cup. We got uh, a uh, half a cup plus two tablespoons of sugar, which is about 125 grams. We have one cup of the rice vinegar, which you can see is most of the jar. This is a cup and a half in that jar. And we have a teaspoon of the salt over here. We're gonna combine those and we are going to dissolve the salt and sugar in our vinegar mix. And turn this on. Uh, get this started to warm up and I'll pour the salt and sugar in there and we will stir and get this thing dissolved and pour it into the jar. Uh, the, uh, and, and that's pretty close to it. Actually, we have to let it cool before we pour it in the jar, but you'll see. So it didn't take but just a few moments for this uh, vinegar to start uh, steaming a little bit. Not quite boiling, but I think I can start getting this sugar and salt dissolved in here. I'm not gonna let it set at all. And try not to splash again too. There's the salt. And I basically want this thing to heat until all that is dissolved. You can hear it grinding along the bottom with the granules of sugar and salt. And I'll just keep stirring this until it is where we want it to be. So a few seconds later and you can see there is no more undissolved salt or sugar in here and we are simply going to set this aside and let it cool for a few minutes. And as you can see here it's come back to a very clear state the way it was before. You can actually see there's no granules in there at all. And after it's cooled just a little bit, we don't want it boiling going in here because we've already blanched our ginger. We're going to simply pour this in and cover the ginger and that's important you want to cover the ginger and with a full cup of vinegar in there it's actually not going to be a problem and you'll notice all the bubbles coming out there and you can actually you want you want those bubbles out uh, you can take a like a chopstick we have some stainless steel chopsticks you can take a butter knife you can kind of just go down in there and work out those bubbles but you do want that ginger inside or underneath the surface of the vinegar mixture and again that's a cup of vinegar half, half a cup of sugar plus two tablespoons which is equal to about uh, what was that 125 grams and then a uh, teaspoon of salt in there and all that helps to preserve this and this should uh, last once it's done we're going to let it cool and we're going to refrigerate it. It should last maybe six months. Uh, sometimes it's even more than that. 
but it should last a good long time like this. So if you don't get to it right away, it uh, it should be safe to keep in the fridge. But we're going to leave this uh, uh, cover just a little ajar so it can breathe, let it cool, and then we'll refrigerate that, refrigerate that and uh, either tonight or tomorrow, we will come back and give it a taste. Now, I, I'd imagine that it's probably better to leave it longer. The longer it sits, the better the flavors are. But I am so excited to see if it's anything close to what our favorite sushi place serves. So, next shot will be tasting. So, here we are. It is late evening, the day I made this. It is fully chilled and I'm a little anxious to try it. It's been uh, nine hours, eight hours since we put it in here. And as I was doing my research, one place said it needs to stay in there a day. And another place said after three hours you can eat it. And so, and then another one said wait a week. And so it was, it was kind of a varied as far as how long to leave it in the, uh, the, the mixture. So I want to try a piece, and I think Mrs. Bowtie wants to try a piece too. She's over here off camera, and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing if this is what I get with my sushi. So that is my hope. So it's uh, it's not as thin as the stuff as we get from our place. What's the name of our place? Shankishi. Shankishi, yeah. It's not quite as thin, so I think the... Uh, Mandolin, I have to try a thinner setting next time, but. Oh. <laughs> yeah. You want to try a piece? Yeah, put it on a napkin. Oh. Here you go, right here. That's really good. That's it. I mean, that is really good. <laughs> yeah. Oh my wow. goodness. That is really good. Yeah. That's better than the stuff we get at the sushi place. Mm. I can't wait to let it ferment a little bit more. Yeah. Argo, yeah. pickle think, a little bit more. You pickle, know what? Yeah. It's going to be, it's, it's good and it's going to get better. And I, you got to understand, you know, when I'm looking at creating stuff like this, oof, wow. Strong. It is very strong. <laughs> But the longer you let it pickle, yeah. the, it'll... It'll mellow. But, you know, this this is kind of like high food right here. Uh, this is this is not like anything I thought I could ever create. So I am so pleased with that. Uh, I'm going to savor this for the next, uh, I don't know, 12 hours? No, not really. <laughs> All right. But anyway, so there we go. Um, hope you... Uh, Learned how easy that is, because if I can do it, anybody can do it. The, uh, the people, of, those of you who have subscribed and have come back to watch, I appreciate you coming back and I appreciate you subscribing. It helps grow the channel. If you have not yet subscribed, please do so and don't miss what's coming up. Uh, CT's question about um, how to, what to do for our beds this winter without breaking the bank. I mentioned that in the previous video. Uh, still going to address that as soon as I can. The, uh, the, uh, what's the other thing that's coming? Oh, yeah. Uh, today is Monday, January 1st, and Saturday we have garden tours being recorded, which I'm very excited about because we have our first of 2024 garden tours because there's still stuff going on out in the garden. Things are happening. And so, anyway, uh, please do subscribe so you don't miss anything. Um, if you thought this was at all uh, informational, educational, inspirational, or entertaining, watching me mess around with the ginger, click the thumbs up and share it on your social media and comment below. Uh, have you ever done this? Have you ever uh, uh, worked with ginger? What have you made with it? Um, I know next year I'm going to try some fermenting, uh, actual fermenting, not just pickling, and uh, we'll see what we can do with that. I know I've seen a lot of videos on that as well, and I really wanted this first. So, uh, yeah, that's just about everything. And uh, from Mrs. Bowtie and myself, who doesn't normally end the videos with me, what was that? Happy New Year. Happy New Year, and have a blessed day.
Thank you.